cash flow and decide you know, if you're eligible for a loan or not eligible for a loan. It helps you to prepare your tax returns because if everything is organized, it says your accountants have much less work to do, which is a good and a bad thing because you're saying, why am I doing the work for them? However, they do know a lot of it about the tax codes, and you still want to make sure you're working with an accountant. But if they don't have to go through a shoebox with the receipts, it makes things a lot easier, and of course, you get charged less money to do that. Okay. okay. So once we put all of our information in the accounting system, whether it's manual or whether it is a computerized system, we basically have a balance sheet, an income statement. We talked about the cash flow as the big three reports. Okay. So from last night, so what is the income statement? What does that show? Income and expenses. Income expenses. So you have your income coming in and your revenue or and your expenses going out. See it? <laughs> okay. Then we've got our balance sheet. What is our balance sheet? Assets and liabilities. Okay, so those would be your assets and liabilities. What would be an asset? Building. Land. Could be building, land. Cash and equipment. Equipment, cash on hand. Herd. Could be the herd, let's inventory, yes, yeah, so that would be another asset. Goodwill. Goodwill is intangible, but yes, you can put goodwill on there. But mostly when you're getting ready to sell the build the business for valuation. So you can add goodwill. So if you've got a good name, again, some people sell the name or the goodwill of the business as an asset when you're getting ready to sell or do a succession plan. So then we've got the cash flow, which is not up there, but what is the statement of cash flow? Cash in and cash out. And how does it differ from the income statement, which is revenue in and expenses out? Account receivable, account uh, okay. uh, Accounts receivable. Well, that's not that's going to show one where. Want we'll to show on the cash flow? It's going to show on the balance sheet. Why is it going to show on the balance sheet? Right, it's just balancing out. So we have our accounts receivable will be an asset or a liability. Uh, accounts receivable. It's an asset, so our account payable is a liability. Exactly. So again, we've got production activities, and we have investment activities, finance activities. are kind of just the three basic that you've got. So production is what most of you guys are going to all, pretty much everybody's got production. And some of you may have investment or finance, depending on whether you're already doing financing and getting loans or whether you're going to then do any type of investment in the business, and that's when we start to get the depreciation, get sales of long-term assets, then they become part of your business as well. All right, so we have our basic accounting terms, which we've been over. So we have our accounts payable, which is anything that you basically owe, your bills coming in, and that would typically be, if I go out and pay cash for something, would that be accounts payable? No. Why not? Because you pay cash and it's now over a period of time. Okay, so accounts payable over a period of time. It might be a 30-day term, it might be a 45-day term. You're having some type of credit where you're getting something today, but you're going to owe the money sometime down the road. Accounts receivable, what would that mean? Money coming in. It is money coming in, but how's that different from cash coming in? It's money waiting. It's money you owe. Yeah. People that owe you. So basically, the accounts payable to you is an account receivable to somebody else. Okay? So accounts receivable can be, again, difficult if you don't have a really good what? Accounting system. Not accounting system, but. Record keeping. Person to call. Record keeping, but. Yeah, follow through. Yes. Well, follow through, you got to start calling people up and saying, you know, hey, can you pay? And if they don't, what happens? Well, you have to do the collection, right? So when people owe you money, you basically are financing that. Okay? So if you don't have a really good cash flow, you can get into cash trouble yourself. You can have a really, really good business, but if you've got high receivables, you got a lot of money out there waiting to come in, but it may never come in, and so you're going to have to write that off eventually. Okay? So you have to really watch your accounts receivable. That's why people do what? Credit checks, exactly. So that's what you guys are working on, building your credit so again people can lend you money because they're going to say, I know that they're going to pay me back. I won't have to chase the accounts receivable. Okay? Anybody ever heard of factoring accounts receivable? Anybody heard of factoring? No? Factoring? Anybody heard of factoring? Okay, 
Wow. That's when you sell your accounts receivable to people who have a ability to really collect, and, but you sell it at a loss. Exactly. So again, if your receivables get a lot of business, when they get into a lot of trouble, <laughs> they start selling off their accounts receivable. So you may have $10,000 in accounts receivable, and somebody says, well, I'll give you $8,000 in cash for it. Take it or leave it. So yes, you collected your eight thousand. Your you know you collected your cash, but you lost two thousand dollars because that's what it costs to basically collect that money. And that could be your net profit. I mean, it could be your profit yeah, exactly. So could be your, uh, in other words, uh, what you cost you to make it two thousand eight thousand. Exactly. So you want to really watch any type of receivables. And most farmers don't have a lot of receivables. You don't pay a lot of cash. So just so you're aware of what those terms are.
the loan to go back and try to sort all those things out. Okay? Even if you write on all the receipts, it's still difficult to know what was that for? What did I do with that? So if you just get into the habit of doing your receipts and stuff on a weekly or daily basis, it makes things a lot easier. Okay? So just schedule that into your time just like you do everything else. If you schedule an hour every week or whatever it takes, it's going to be much easier than trying to sit down for six or seven or eight or nine hours over a short period of time to try to catch everything up. Okay? So be consistent and be disciplined. So as we're entering in, you want to be consistent in your accounts as well. When we talk about accounts or categories, is you want to make sure you're always putting the same things in the same category. So don't call it seeds one day and then call it supplies tomorrow. Okay, you want to make sure you're consistently putting the same type of expense in the same category all the time. As I said, get assistance if you need help. There's lots of assistance out there. So whether you go to your accountant, whether you go to somebody else here, whether you come to PFF, get assistance if you're having trouble. Don't just kind of struggle through it. Okay? Everybody good?